on, for God's sake, it's just an anklet. What the hell, man? What the hell? What? Why are you sweating about it? Come on, come on, man. Come on. Hey, listen, man. Don't sweat about it. I'm telling you. Why are you so stressed about it? It's just anklets. I'm gonna teach you everything about ECG that you need to use in your anklets. It's not much. Seven, eight rhythms. Memorize them, and then you are good to go. That's it. You don't need to memorize textbooks. You don't need to memorize 200-page ECG PDF. Period, man. What's wrong with you? It's just eight rhythms. Hey, listen. I'm gonna teach you all about it. Just give me a second. Let me enjoy the weather. Oh my god, I just finished my shift, by the way. Yeah, but you know, I, I heard you calling, I heard your struggle. So Alpha Slice is here to help you out, man. Listen, if you haven't watched my other Anklex videos, I'm gonna link them all down in the description box. Check them out. Actually, my wife passed her Anklex just a month ago. She passed her Anklex with 76 questions. She followed the simple algorithm. Check her Anklex videos down in the description box. But listen, man, just give me a second, let me catch my breath. <sighs> I just finished my shift. It has been a long ass shift, busy shift, but guess what, I'm not complaining, we saved lives today. For some of you guys who don't know me and just came across the channel, it's alright, I'm gonna tell you everything about me in a 6 minute video. My name is Mohammed, and I'm gonna link the video up in the cards. Check it out, you will not regret it. Alright guys, it's getting a little bit windy, let's go inside and show you the 10 rhythms you need to master your ECG on your NCLEX test. Let's go guys, but first I want you to meet the family. Who do we have here? Let's see. Hey, Judo. How are you? Hey, Mama. How are you, Daddy? Say hi to you, to family. Hi. Hi. Oh, they're busy. They're busy playing games. Let's see. Where's Angelina? All right, guys, awesome. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna give you some help with the ECG, but first, let's talk basics. This is a beat. It's one single beat. This is a P wave, that's a Q, R, S, and a T wave. Our focus is gonna be on the P wave, P, R interval, and then the Q, R, S. So for some of you guys who don't know what the P, R interval, it starts right there, and it ends at the Q. So that's a PR interval. Now, I'm gonna show you some numbers. But first, I want you to know some basics. Like, this is a large square from here to here. I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna use this paper later, but from here to here is a large square. Those small squares, we have five small squares and one large square. So when I say a small square, that means that little dude right there and the large square is that one over there so let me zoom in a little bit you guys can see what i'm talking about so large squares and small squares all right guys i'm gonna move this to the side and then we're gonna talk some numbers pr interval first off one small square or one small box is gonna be 0 0.04 seconds one large box equal to five small boxes equal to 0 0.2 seconds. That's a given, you need to memorize that. A PR interval ranges from 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. So that is three small squares and that is one large box or square. All right, so we got this down. Now the second most important is the QRS. So a QRS interval is from 0 0.06 seconds to 0 0.1 seconds. That is 1.5 small boxes, and this is 2.5 small boxes, okay? If you forget the numbers, then if you memorize the boxes, then you would be fine. Okay, another basic thing, heart rate, the normal is from 60 to 100. Anything above that is called tachycardia. Anything less than that is called bradycardia. 
All right, are you guys with me? Awesome. So we're gonna talk about three categories of rhythms. First, we're gonna talk about atrial arrhythmias, then ventricular arrhythmias, and then locks, right? I know this is your least favorite, but we're gonna make it your favorite, okay? All right, first I'm gonna start with atrial arrhythmias. Atrial arrhythmias are atrial R2 types. Bear in mind, I'm not giving you a crash course about ECG. I'm gonna give you the 10 rhythms you need to know to pass your NCLEX, period. And in each rhythm, I'm gonna give you the bottom line of what you need to know. So this is the first rhythm that we're gonna talk about. Anytime you see P waves like that, they call them saw tooth or saw waves. Anytime you see saw waves, that's atrial flutter, period. Narrow QRS and see saw waves, atrial flutter. That's it. Moving to the next wave. The second atrial arrhythmia that I want you to know is atrial fibrillation. How do you distinguish atrial fibrillation? First off, as we said, narrow QRS. which means it's from 0 0.06 to 0 0.1 seconds. 1.5 boxes, 2.5 boxes. So if we count together, let me zoom in a little bit. So if we count together, it starts right there. One, two boxes. That's QRS. That's a narrow QRS. All right, the, the, the second thing you're gonna notice about atrial fibrillation is, this is called R wave. This is another R wave. This is another R wave. So R to R, is irregular. R to R interval is irregular meaning that the distance from one R to another R is not similar or is not equal to the distance from here to here. And you see, this is way smaller than this. So if you have narrow QRS, irregular R to R, then you call it atrial fibrillation. Never mind about the P wave. Sometimes they tell you you have multiple P's and sometimes they tell you you don't have a P. But never mind the P wave. All you need to know is narrow QRS, irregular R to R, then you call it atrial fibrillation, period. Moving to the next rhythm. All right, so the ones we talked about are atrial arrhythmias. Now we're gonna talk about ventricular arrhythmias. Actually, there are three of them. If we bring our beat here, that's a P wave, that's a narrow QRS, that's a T wave. Right here, I don't see any P waves, I don't see a narrow QRS, and I don't see a T wave. All I see is this rhythm. You print this out and you hang it in front of your desk. Anytime you see this rhythm, that's a ventricular tachycardia. They also call it VTAC. Moving to the next rhythm. Actually, this is the same rhythm. This is a VTAC as well. So it has a different form. Instead of having that form, it's a wide QRS. Maybe you can see a P wave here. Maybe you don't. There's no T wave, but this is called a VTAC. Usually it is regular from R to R, same distance but definitely it's a wide QRS. This is another shape that you can see VTAC and you just memorize the rhythm. 
period. I don't want you to think much about it. Anytime you see this, that's VTech. All right, this is not ECG. This is more of ACLS and algorithms, but, but anytime you see a VTech, you're gonna think of two options. You're gonna think of no pulse, and then you start chest compressions. Some drugs that they might give during a pulseless VTEC are Cordaron, they call it Amiodarone as well. Then you've got Lidocaine, and then you've got DC shocks. All right, the other situation of VTECs where the patient has a pulse. Also, that could be two situations. First situation, the patient could be stable, which means hemodynamically stable. When we talk about hemodynamically, blood pressure is normal. And then you think of drugs, which is amiodarone or lidocaine. The other situation is when the patient is unstable, it means low blood pressure, then you, you would be thinking of DC shocks plus drugs. That's all you need to know about it, period. All right, this is another type of VTAC. They call it Torsade de Puente. And excuse my French genes. But they call it Torsade de Puente. You can pronounce it however you like to pronounce it. But it's basically like a DNA shape. And then if you draw like that, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. So if you draw the DNA right here, it would go like that. And so it's getting smaller. What the heck did I do? Bigger, smaller, bigger. So any DNA like arrhythmia with a wide QRS, you call it torsade de puente. It's a form of VTAC. And the first thing you need to think of in terms of treatment is magnesium. So you give MGSO4, and then the patient most probably will convert to normal sinus rhythm. So that's about it. This rhythm is another ventricular arrhythmia. It's chaotic. So it's like that, you don't see P waves, you don't see QRSs, it's just chaotic. That's a V, that's a V-fib. They call it ventricular fibrillation. Basically what the heart is doing, it's shivering like that. So the treatment is to, first you start CPR, and then after you put the patient on AED, and you find that rhythm, that's a shockable rhythm, then you give a DC shock, and then continue CPR. Print this rhythm and put it in front of your desk. All right, now we're gonna talk about blocks. We're gonna start with first degree AV block. Okay, when we talk about blocks, I want you to think of rate, rhythm, B wave, PR interval, and QRS. So five categories that you need to think of in terms of blocks. Rate, how to calculate the rate, it's R waves times 10. So this is an R, this is another R. So one, two, three, four, five, six times 10. This heart rate is 60 beats per minute. All right, the rhythm here, it's regular. So R to R equals R to R equals R to R. And if you check P to P and then P to P and then P to P, it will show that it is the same distance, then that's regular. P wave, it's normal, normal amplitude, normal direction. PR interval, so the P starts right there and it ends right there. So if you look up closely, it's more than one large box. So we said the normal PR interval is 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. So it's three small boxes to one large box. More than one large box, then the PR interval is prolonged. 
So here it's almost seven small boxes, which means greater than 0.2 seconds prolonged. QRS, it's narrow, narrow QRS, which is normal, okay? So let me get the red color. So PR interval is prolonged, everything else is normal, and it's constant. Constant prolongation. So from here to here, it's seven boxes. From here to here, it's another seven small boxes. Here to here, another seven, another seven, another seven. Then that's a first degree AV block. Narrow QRS, prolonged PR interval with constant speed, then that's a first degree AV block. So now we're gonna move to the second rhythm and we're gonna talk about second degree AV block. Mobits one, or they call it Winky Bach. Excuse my German. So second degree AV block, Mobits one, or Winky Bach, how we differentiate that, and it's pretty easy. As we said, there are five things we need to look at, rate, rhythm, P wave, PR interval, and then QRS, right? So the rate, it's R times 10, one, two, three, four, five, times 10, that's 50. The rhythm, if I check R to R, this one is wide, then it's not regular. If I check P to P, it is regular. So regular, atrial rate, irregular ventricular rate. P wave's normal, so the PR interval. If I check PR interval here, it starts right there, ends right there, so it's almost six small boxes. Then if I check right here, to right there, that's almost seven small boxes. Let me check right there, right there, that's 10 boxes. So it's progressive prolongation until it dropped a beat. So when there's prolongation of PR interval and then it dropped a beat, that's called second degree AV block. Bear in mind the QRS is normal. Narrow QRS. So narrow QRS, narrow QRS, prolongation, and then a drop beat you call it second degree AV block, Mobitz one or Wanky Buck. Oh, this is fancy. This is colored. All right, so we're gonna put the rhythm like that. This is second degree AV block type two or Mobitz type two. Okay, so same thing here. We're gonna talk about the rate, the rhythm, P wave, and then P, R, interval, and then Q, R, S. So here you will notice that you have more P waves and less Q, R, S's, which means atrial rate is greater than ventricular rate. So you're not getting a QRS after every single P. Here, sometimes there are missing beats. Here, there's a missing beat, and here, there's a missing beat. All right, the rhythm, it's obvious from P to P, to P to P to P, it is regular. So, regular atrial rhythm, but from QRS to QRS to QRS, it's not the same. So, irregular ventricular 
rhythm. P wave looks normal. PR interval here it looks normal. That's the distance. Here it looks normal. Four small boxes. Here you cannot measure it. You cannot measure it. I mean, it could be normal or prolonged. But it is constant distance. The QRS, it is wide, complex. It's obvious, wide, complex. It starts here, ends here. That's almost two large boxes and that's abnormal. So there you have it guys. Two very important aspects that you need to distinguish a second degree AV block type two, which is the rhythm, regular atrial rate, irregular ventricular rate, and the QRS is wide complex. Then immediately you call it second degree AV block mob, it's two. And now you're gonna see the difference between second degree AV block mob, it's two, and a third degree AV block. So the same, we're gonna check the rate, rhythm, P wave, PR interval, and QRS. And then we're gonna put them side to side and compare them. The rate, same thing, atrial rate is greater than ventricular rate. And the reason being, you've got P's more than you've got QRS's. Because here it dropped a beat, here it dropped a beat, dropped a beat, dropped a beat. The rhythm, it is regular P2P or regular atrial rhythm and it's regular R to R or regular ventricular rhythm. And I'm gonna explain this, I'm gonna show it to you. Let me grab this band right here. So this is the first P and then you're gonna see a P right here, you're gonna see P right here, that's a P right there, a P, a P, a P, P. And then you're gonna say, Mo, okay, the distance from here to here, similar to here, similar to here, similar to here, similar to this, but here, like, it's wide. How can you consider this regular? And I'm gonna tell you, look at this right here. There's a hidden P right there. There's a hidden P. If you compare this QRS, this QRS, and here, you can see that there is a hidden P right there. Now, if you measure the distance between this P and this P and then this P and this P and this P and this P, that's an equal distance. That's why it's regular. Sometimes you have hidden P's, just look for a little bit of abnormal waves. Sometimes it's hidden behind the QRS. So regular R to R, R to R to R, it's regular. So this is a very important aspect that you need to have in this rhythm. P wave, it's normal. PR interval, it varies. Like here it's prolonged, but then here you cannot measure it. Prolonged, I don't know, prolonged. It's not consistent, so it varies. Not consistent. And then the QRS, it's a wide complex. All right, so there are a few things that you need to know. So we said wide complex QRS, and then you've got regular P2P and regular R2R. Whenever you have this combination, then you call it third degree AV block. And sometimes I like to say like, what the f is going on? As if there is dissociation between the atrium and the ventricle. So, you know, the heart looks like that. This part is beating on its own and this part is beating on its own. They are not communicating together. So whenever you have regular P2P, regular R2R and wide complex and you will have the impression of what the f*** is going on then and only then that's a third degree if you block. And let me put them side to side and compare them with each other. This is the second degree AV block and this is the third degree AV block. And here you can clearly see that R to R are not regular, while here they are regular. P to P are regular here and are regular here. 
and both of them have white complex. The only variation is the regular R2R. So this is how you distinguish second degree AV block type two and third degree AV block. I'm gonna show you another version of third degree AV block here. You clearly can see that this is a, the QRS is a narrow complex. So I'm gonna put here third degree AV block and we'll walk through this together. So as we said, the rate, the rhythm, P wave and P or interval. So the rate, you gotta see there's a P here, there's a hidden P here. This is a T wave, but if you compare it with this T wave, you can see that this is higher and there's where the other P is hidden. It's hidden behind the T wave. And then there's a P here, there's a P here. That's a P as well, that's a P as well, that's a P, P, and P. If you measure the distance between the P's, it's the same. That's why I would say the rate, the atrial rate, is the atrial rate is regular and then the ventricular rate the distance from here to here from R to R to R to R to R to R it's regular ventricular rate or regular R to R okay the P wave for me these P waves are normal PR interval here, it varies from, I mean here you cannot say because there's a drop beat. Here it's normal, here it's very wide, but again there's there might be a drop beat here. And then here the P is delayed. And then here it's prolonged, so I would say interval varies. It's not consistent. Narrow complex QRS. I mean, this rhythm here give me the impression of what the f is going on. And then whenever I have this impression, I would say that's a third degree AV block. If it meets that criteria, atrial rate is regular, ventricular rate is regular, and narrow or wide QRS, I would immediately say that this is a third degree AV block. Remember this, guys. Yes. It is almost 2.30 a.m. I still have to edit this video and post it, and tomorrow I've got work at 7 a.m. If you like what you saw, please share it and subscribe. Your word of mouth is my oxygen. If you like this video and you would like me to speak about different topics, please drop a comment down below, and don't forget to smash that like button. And if you are new to this channel, please, and I'm saying please, punch that face down below to subscribe. And if you haven't watched yesterday's vlog, click over there to watch it. Until next time, be an alpha slice.